You're watching T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and entertaining science fiction author on video. And in my last episode, I did a video on something paranormal, nothing to do with science fiction whatsoever. Well, today I'm going back onto the science fiction track with another episode in my Tiger Burning series. Speaking of Tiger Burning, definitely pick it up and pre-order it. It's available in July of 2019, but that doesn't mean you can't buy it today. And I did a video earlier explaining why I need you to pre-order it. I'll go ahead and put a link to it here. Pew, pew, pew. Now, Helping me out by pre-ordering, or, or by pre-ordering, you'll be helping me out because that means that I'll, have a, I'll stand a better chance of getting on a bestsellers list, not to mention the fact that it's just going to be a great book. I wrote it, so I'm a little bit biased, but, eh, you know, you try it out and let me know what you think. So today I'm going to address the question, one that I get frequently, that's a lie, I don't get this question ever, but it's still one that I've always wondered about, and that is Gamma Ray Bursts. Can gamma ray bursts, the mess, massive ones that you get during the formation of a supernova or during the, the collision of two stars that form a black hole, if one of those occurs close enough, will that kill everything on Earth? And if so, how does that happen? Now, my characters in Tiger Burning face a lot of danger in space. One thing, thankfully, they don't face are gamma ray bursts from collapsing stars or from exploding stars. But what they do face are gamma ray bursts from nuclear weapons on missiles fired from other ships as they fight a, a massive space battle toward the end of the book. Now, that has nothing to do with gamma ray on Earth, but I throw that out there just to give you a taste of what's in the book. One of my favorite scenes. But in any case, what, what dangers do we face from gamma ray bursts on Earth? Well, the, the short answer is, luckily, not much. There's nothing near enough to us in the form of stars about to go supernova or stars about to collide to form a black hole that we really have to be worried about such an intense gamma ray burst that it's going to kill all life on Earth. But what we may have to worry about is something that's almost just as bad, and that is a gamma ray burst that's strong enough and close enough to strip away our ozone layer. One of the best things we have going for us is our atmosphere and our ozone and the Van Allen radiation belt because those things combine to protect us from particles from the, from the sun, from the solar wind, and they will also protect us to some extent from gamma ray in terms of bursts that come through and could cause damage to life on, on Earth. But there's a point at which the ozone layer could be overwhelmed. In fact, there's some evidence that it actually did happen in the Middle Ages where gamma ray, a gamma ray burst hit the Earth wasn't enough necessarily to completely strip away the ozone layer, but the gamma ray burst was intense enough that you saw evidence of it in terms of isotopic evidence of plants and other things that have been excavated from that time period. And at the same time period in Antarctica, you see a spike of uh, one of the beryllium isotopes, I think it's beryllium-10, that's consistent with a gamma ray burst hitting the ozone. Thankfully for us, it wasn't enough to strip away our ozone, and why is that a big deal? What would happen if a gamma ray burst was close enough and intense enough to, to basically strip the Earth of its ozone layer? Well, if you're old enough like me, you remember back in the 80s and the 70s, we switched away from these things called chlorofluorocarbons because we were starting to see a hole in the ozone over Antarctica, and that freaked a lot of people out. Why did that freak people out? Well, what happens when you don't have enough ozone between you and the sun is that UV rays can get through very easily. Ozone blocks UV light to some extent from the sun, mitigates it, and so if you have an ozone hole over where you suntan, I spent a lot of time in Australia, and they had massive campaigns all the time about wearing sunscreen because you could easily get burned and overwhelmed by UV light, and if you get sunburn often enough, of course, that leads to potential skin cancer. Now, that's just an ozone hole. What happens if the entire layer of ozone is pulled away and destroyed? Within days of the removal of the ozone layer, you would start to see big trouble on the surface of the Earth. Number one, plants would be co become overwhelmed and would not be able to conduct photosynthesis, so they wouldn't be able to grow, and over time what you would see is most plants die off. Once the plants died off, of course, that's going to cause a cascade effect where anything herbivores that feed on those plants, they're going to die too. Carnivores will do okay for a while, but at some point they're going to have nothing to feed off. Once all the plants are gone, then all the herbivores are gone. Carnivores are going to run out of sources of protein and meat to eat, and so then the carnivores are going to be gone as well. And you see what I'm getting at. At some point, there's nothing left for humans to eat. Now, you might do okay if you're living underground and you have years and years of years of food stored up, but at some point you're going to have to come out and try and repopulate the earth, and it's not clear how long things are going to be basically barren on the surface. 
Now, don't get overwhelmed. You can spend a lot of time thinking about what happens if the Earth gets hit by an asteroid or a meteor. What happens if a gamma ray burst occurs? What happens if there's a coronal mass injection and basically charged particles overwhelm our electrical grid? What happens if there is a nuclear war, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? There's plenty of stuff to get worried about. But the fact of the matter is the chances of this happening are slim. Uh, don't get worried about this stuff. If you want to, you know, there's a good reason to prepare anyway in terms of having some food on hand, water, or whatever, and that is the more common things like hurricanes, earthquakes, those sorts of things. If you go to the FEMA website, everybody should have at least a short time food storage supply on hand, including water, and maybe some gasoline and a generator. There's no problem getting prepared in that way, and if you're inclined and you want to go bigger and you have the money, that's fine too. But don't sit there and bank on something like a gamma ray burst happening in our lifetime or even in your children's lifetime. I don't know sp specifically what the odds are of it happening. But again, scientists have looked at the stars that are closest to us, and it's highly unlikely that there's anything nearby that would go supernova and affect us really in any way whatsoever. The other thing is it really has to be pointed at us. The gamma ray burst will come out in basically a cone, and it has to be pointed at us and hit us to have any meaningful effect. That's it for this episode. Didn't mean to be so morbid. Buy my book, July 2019. Get it pre-ordered today. You can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, and the links are below. End transmission. Hey, TC McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.